the last time I did a video for one of the Horde nations was in last year. It was the Great Horde. I've also played Uzbek before, so for today's run I've decided to play one of the nations between them, which would be Kazan or Nogai, and just because I prefer the Kazani ideas, we will be playing Kazan. So without too much talking, let's go ahead and begin this run. And this is Kazan in 1444. What makes this horde a bit different from the other ones around us is that we start with a gold mine in Bashgird, and just whenever we decide we can start developing it, we won't have any money issues. From the very start, we can also propagate religion, so this will allow us to convert up to four provinces in the Kazan trade node. Let's go over to the estates, or estate I should say, because we only have tribes as a horde nation. We can summon the diet, doesn't really matter what it requires us to do, we will just go ahead and grant loyalty. National Manpower Modifier. Religious Unity is actually really good for Kazan because we start with 79%. So this will remove our National Unrest and Yearly Corruption debuffs. And I also like to go for Stability Cost Modifier Reduction. Now to kickstart our run, we're gonna sell titles and seize lands. We are starting with 300 ducats. We can use this money to recruit some more units, for example the Free Company. So I'm gonna go ahead and recruit this. Also get some advisors. We can go for Yearly Prestige. Double Reputation. And you know what? I think we can afford a level 2 advisor, I'll just go for this morale of armies one. If you get bad luck like me and you don't have a good level 1 advisor, I think it's a good option. Or you can just reroll these advisors, but I'll just go with that. Actually, our ruler also got a morale of armies trait, so this is great. Let's click the national decisions to get additional yearly prestige and also automatically complete our agenda. Now we need to pray to the RN Jesus and hope we get some decent generals. I will make my ruler one. Uh, he's not good. Let's try again. Okay, this is actually decent. With free shock, we can work. Uzbek wants to ally us. Now, what's the actual situation? They're allied with the Great Horde. Okay, so we don't want to do that. Nogai has no alliances. I hope it's gonna stay like that on the 11th of December. This would be the easiest war ever. Okay, it's the 11th of December. Nogai allied Crimea. Yeah, not the best thing that could have happened for us. I actually sometimes like to ally Crimea, especially if I go for war with Great Horde first. Because they can act as a really good distraction, in their capital they actually produce salt which gives additional 15% local defensiveness and this fort is usually pretty damn hard to take. But just because Crimea in this case has quite a weak alliance set, we could actually vassalize them and I kinda wanna do that. The longer we wait, the higher the chances are that Ottomans will make their a tributary. So I think I will go for Nogai first. And basically, our only two choices in the start are Great Horde or Nogai, because we need their provinces to complete our first mission, United Tatars. Now I wonder, what if we temporarily use Uzbek to help us out with that? Would that be a good option? I guess we can always try. We will of course betray them a bit later, but for this war it might not be too bad, so let's rival Nogai and the Great Horde. I'm gonna try and mark some of these provinces as my vital interest. Of course, there's no guarantee that Uzbek would give it to us, but we can try at least to occupy Nogay ourselves, because this is the only province that we need. So, go belligerent Crimea and call in Uzbek with promise of lands. Let's roll, boys. With these free diplomats, what I'm gonna do is start spying. I will probably spy Uzbek and Muscovy, and later even the Great Horde. These bastards, Great Horde actually gives access to Crimea, so... It won't take long before they come and try to destroy our stacks here. Oh, he's here, all right. Well, that's that's pretty good. He can siege down my provinces, don't really care about that. Also, let's make sure to boost our stability. I kind of forgot about that. So since I see that Nogai is in Uzbek's lands, I also see Crimea's and Sandar's army. I think we can actually go and wipe this 6,000. So if we do that, we can fight Crimea and we will have this war pretty much secured. In the meantime, let's try and continue conquering some of these provinces so we can take just as much stuff as possible and not give anything to Uzbek. Yep, here we go. We completely crushed them. Two shock army. Man, we got this in the bag. He doesn't know what's coming for him. There we actually go. Oh wow, the Great Horde declared a war on Crimea. And that is not the worst thing that could have happened. Because obviously we will vassalize Crimea. So this means we will get into an instant war with the Great Horde and we can avoid fighting Uzbek this way. I think this is actually great. Oh no guy, you got trapped. And we have Uzbekians helping us out. Oh he's dead. He's crushed. I think we might have a slight problem and that is Great Horde having a 5 shock general. So if we wanna fight them instantly after finishing the war with Crimea, I think we need to get like a couple more soldiers. I think what I'm gonna do is just recruit independent Kozak hosts to help us out with that. 
There we have it, boys. We're vassalizing them. 64 aggressive expansion. All good. Let's do it, man. Now, rally up our army. We're gonna crush the Great Horde. If we wanted to, we could even call in Uzbek again. Not gonna do it. I don't think we need that. Oh, he's doomed. Oh, he's doomed now. That's what you get for trying this bullcrap, man. Is that a wipe? Yes, it is. Oh, is that not lovely to see Great Horde with no units at all? I actually think I might have gotten, like, the best starting RNG with Kazan. Because not only that, check how much stuff we're taking from Nogai at the same point. Oh, this is beautiful. And now these provinces, of course, we want to raise. Not many of them we can actually raise because they're quite low developed, but it's something. Since we are quite struggling with our money as I recruited additional mercenary group, what I'm going to do is encourage development and start developing our gold mine at the same point. Just a little bit of an investment. Oh, if only they knew how much I don't care about them breaking the alliance. Do that, please. Actually, let me make your job a bit faster. Ottomans are not necessarily happy about their expansion, so I'm kind of worried, you know. Minus 47 aggressive expansion. And after we take stuff from the Great Horde, I think there will actually be a slight collision. So this might be a good point to start searching for some alliances. We could get one with a jam, and perhaps even Chagatai could be not such a bad option. Or even Timurids. So scrap the plans of improving spy network, I think we need to improve relations instead. I think that is a lovely peace deal, we're completely isolating the Great Horde, we're just leaving them with three separated provinces that can be accessed by only Gazimukus and Circassians. So have at it boys, have at it, I don't care about it too much. Raise, 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 that's a lot of mana points and hopefully we can establish our level 4 military technology quite soon, so we will be ahead of time from everyone else. Of course it costs a lot because we don't have feudalism at the start. And I think to embrace it, we pretty much need to fight Muscovy and take provinces from them. Or, you know, we could go into Caucasia, but there will be a coalition in this part. So I think my next wars will be like Ryazan, Muscovy, and later on Uzbek. And this is how much people don't like us. We have Shirvan, Gazikmuk, Akka Yunlum, Ottomans. They all should be entering the coalition soon. My new rivals will actually be Muscovy and Uzbek. Now let's see if we can make Crimea happy, just blockade a couple times, don't want to worry about that. There we have it, let's ally Chagatai. And here we also have a jam. Now there is one horrible thing, and that is Lithuania being at war with Ryazan. Yeah, they cannot access the Great Horde, so that's fine, but I really don't want them to take these provinces. Or more specifically, if we're looking to form the Golden Horde, we don't want them to take the province, well, their capital. So let's try and rush this. Please don't do it, bro. Yes, stick there. I just want to make sure to have soldiers on their capital and that would be good enough for me. Shirvan and Armans have entered the coalition. Not the best thing that could have happened. Nothing that a good old improving relations cannot solve, though. I think we're still good. We're gonna shift our focus from these Sunni nations. We should be just fine, man. We should be just fine. And we got to the province, so all I really needed, we're golden, man. We're good. That's gonna be just a really fast white piece with the Great Horde. Thank you very much. Because we own the province of Sarai, now Muscovy has to pay annual tribute to us. And in this case, they refused, so we can enforce the demands. We're gonna lose 50 mil points and a little bit of manpower, but this is gonna give us like 100 or more decades. Yeah, exactly 100. I think what I'm gonna do with this money is I'm gonna just start building a fort on our gold mine. Because in our wars, this will be the priority for enemies to take this down. It's actually a really good province, like in terms of terrain, it's a mountains fort. Well, we have Riazan, but now what? We don't have access to Twer. No one's gonna give it to us. I guess we just have to wait. Not the worst period of time to chill a little bit, you know, while we're improving relations. Wish we could get into a war with Lithuania, but they're allied with Denmark and Poland. That is quite nasty. Yeah, like, look at that, man. Nearly 100,000 soldiers. Well, I could say this is one of the ways to reach Twer. We can just level up and we can declare a war on Muscovy. Let's do it. Why not? Just need the collision not to trigger and we will be just fine. Okay, let's see how we're gonna destroy these guys. Our 16,000 versus their 12,000. They're doomed. Looks like we have united the Tatars because we have all the needed cores. So we can click this and get more permaclaims. Mainly specifically in Caucasia, Nogai, Uzbek, 
By the way, I want to point it out that I'm not fully coring any of the bronzes that I'm taking currently. My plan is to get to level 5 admin technology as soon as possible so we can start unlocking horde ideas. And from that point we can work on coring stuff if we're gonna be not so well off economically. But we should be fine, like, we can just develop the gold mine, like, seriously. Um, he's still level 3, we're gonna fight in the steps. Even if they have 30,000 soldiers here, it's not gonna matter that much, we're gonna crush them. Yeah, I mean... They don't have a chance. We're losing quite a lot of soldiers, so I think I'm just gonna consolidate regiments. We can maybe look into getting more mercenaries. Sure, let's just start with a free company. That's a lot of rebels, oh come on, they spawned in the no-gay province. And this is another good battle, right? Damn right, seven wars curve from wiping these guys. Honestly, what I want to do is finish the war with Muscovy first, so in that case I would not need to vassalize Twer. I could just take their provinces directly. That would be perfect. Oh, okay. I see how it is. Astrakhan has popped out. They're guaranteed by Lithuania. Well, I would love to get into this war, break Lithuania's alliances. We're about to occupied still. I hope the situation is gonna stay the same by the time we finish our current wars. Oh, that's what I love to see. People are leaving the coalition. Beautiful. I think this battle could secure the war for us. Like, how much more war score do we potentially need? Just occupy a couple more provinces. We should be decent. Yeah, so we're absolutely good here. We can take everything that we need to form the Great Horde, or Golden Horde, I should say. I'm taking one additional province, which is a part of our state. Just a little bit of money. Let's run away. That's just lovely stuff. Raise, boys. Now, of course, let's do it separately. We're gonna peace out to our first. Thank you very much. And Riazan, your days are counted. Good thing that Muscovy is a part of this collision, so I don't think it can actually form, which is good. Now, with us owning Riazan, we can subjugate Riazan, we're gaining permaclaims. So actually, coring these provinces will be even cheaper because it is our permaclaims. Raising plus permaclaims means they're really, really cheap. If we wanted to, we could even sell titles now to get 340 ducats, but we're doing okay with the money, so I'm just gonna seize lands, grow our crown lands, and from 50% we're gonna get additional buffs to our government reform progress. So what do we need to form the Golden Horde? Well, we need to own core provinces from Crimea, so their capital and Mansur, which means we will need to annex them. And we need just a couple more provinces from Uzbek, which is gonna be my next war. Um, the situation did change with Astrakhan. They're allied with Sherwan and Great Horde. It's not bad, certainly not a bad situation. But I wanna fight them together with the Great Horde so we can just eliminate both of these nations at the same time. And our truce is gonna expire. Oh shit, I didn't realize that. Maybe this is gonna be our next war in that case. Perfect, since our truce has expired, what we're gonna do is actually declare a war on Uzbek. So this is gonna be a triple war and a really good one. We're gonna fight Great Horde, Astrakhan as well. First of all, we're gonna just eliminate these countries, then full focus shifted to Uzbek. And of course, we wanna go for tribal feud with Uzbek's capital as the goal. Let's go, we don't need Chagatai, let's do it. What I also did is I got my gold mine up to 10 development, so it's given us nearly 7 decades monthly, that is just beautiful to see. Oh, Uzbek, you poor, poor child. You're absolutely doomed. Wiped off the face of Earth. He's really struggling to siege down my gold mine. Let me help you out with this, man. We're such good people. And we have finally fully eliminated the Great Horde. Things are looking great for us. Lovely name placement at this point. Now that we're making a positive balance, we can send a little gift to Crimea, so we will be surely integrating them after we finish our current war. Sure, let's make it 50 ducats. Enjoy, my man. Looks like we finally can embrace feudalism, so I am fine with taking a few loans to do this. Let's go ahead and do that. There we go, embraced. But this means we can upgrade our technologies. So let's go with level 5 military and level 4s for Diplo and Admin. We are one of the great powers. Good stuff, we're currently holding the fifth place right between France and England. Seems with Jayanagar is going crazy in India in the meantime, probably beat up Bahmanis. Actually kinda weird to see Ottomans not having at least 500 development by now. They haven't been expanding too much, like they took out Trebizond, a small part of Wallachia, and even like a part of Byzantium still exists as Athens, allied with Albania. Yeah, they're not gonna live for... yeah. They're not gonna live. What is happening here? Oh my god. Hungary fighting Bohemia and Venice. Oh god, this is gonna look so dirty. They're probably gonna take a huge chunk of Croatia from them. 
Now we can select our tier 2 government reform, hands down, this is the best option, 20% additional manpower modifiers, so combined with our estate we have a total of 40%. Well, it is the time to finish the war, we're gonna take the two provinces of Kipshak and their capital that are needed to form the Golden Horde. I will create a path to Oirat, basically isolate some parts of Uzbek so they cannot be reached by Transoxiana and Chagatai. We will need these provinces for our next mission which is subjugate the Kazakhs. So here we go, thank you very very much. Should be a ton of mana points as always by... Okay, maybe not so much. These are actually pretty low development lands. Truce with Naga is gonna expire 1462. Okay, we need to keep that in mind. We definitely wanna fight them. Oh, I kinda wanted to go for Transoxiana, but like, look at that. They're allied with the Mamluks. Can you believe that garbage? Well, I guess, yeah, the Mamluks actually protected them. Their independence, I should say. And they're fighting Timurids. Oh, wow. Or it also has a bunch of allies. That doesn't look too good. Maybe we can start with something less significant like Circassia, just take them out and Theodoro at the same time. And of course, what we're gonna do is start integrating Crimea. Now, to make this integration faster, once again, I'm gonna take this diplomatic reputation guy. So technically, I can say that we have all the stuff needed to form the Golden Horde in 1458. The only thing is that we need two provinces from our vassal, so... Maybe that's, that's a bit too many forts, like, we can get rid of the one in Riazan, sure. Let's just delete it. Once we're a bit better off and once we have a good foothold in Caucasia, we're also gonna delete the one in Astrakhan because then we can rock some mountain forts which are gonna be much more beneficial for us. Oh wait, maybe we actually don't need to wait that long until we annex Nogai. Like, we could attack Shirvan. And the thing is that Nogai's total war score cost for provinces is 43%, so this is doubled when they're not co-belligerent and we can full annex them. Okay. Glorious new ruler. I wouldn't say that he's that glorious. 4-3-0. But hey, doesn't really matter that much. It's only the fact that we lost stability so we have to boost it once again. Nasty nasty rebels have started to pop out. Well, at least we can use our lovely mercenaries to take care of that. And you know, this is just a really really small portion of the rebels when we truly speak about it because we have not been fully coring our stuff so we also haven't been reducing autonomy. At some point we will be in hell with rebels, but it's gonna be worth it. Alright, excellent. We can full annex Nogai. Maybe a bit less money. They actually cannot afford to give that much, but here we go. Nice. And of course we have Sherwan under our control. Big Kazan. Huge Kazan name placement. I wish we could take care of Gazikmuk, but come on man. Had to ally Ottomans, didn't they? Of course. At some point, of course, we will need to fight Ottomans. There's no way we can just continue avoiding them. And we can start by getting Georgia on our side. So, tribal conquest, let's go. So, after this war, we will directly border the Ottomans. To be honest, we could take them down. Yo, what's this happening here? Why is everyone coalitioning us? Oh, God. Even Novgorod joined. I'm trying to improve relations, but... The talk I was saying about Ottomans. Yeah, you can disregard it. We're not gonna fight them. Alright, well this is done. Lovely Georgia is ours. A bit unfortunate that we have to deal with this one province vassal, but I guess it's fine. As long as we don't have many relations, it's all good. Oh wow, that's insane. The Ottomans are currently fighting Austria, Hungary, Castile, Naples and a few minor HRE nations. But holy crap, that is pretty big. Ottoman invasion of Hungary. Oh wow, that's crazy. I guess this kinda gives us time. They're really busy, we cannot fight many of these nations that we would like to fight because of either choices or them being in the coalition, so maybe it's time to go for Lithuania. Yeah, they have a huge army, 32,000, they have Denmark and Poland, but maybe we can use this war just to break their alliances or something? I don't think we have like much better stuff to do right now. Or, before doing so, we can also go for Genoa. Yeah, that even sounds better because they're no longer in the HRE. It's gonna be super easy to take the provinces in Crimea area. So, sure, let's go ahead and do this. And by doing so, we'll actually have all of the provinces needed for one of our missions, which is Crimean expansion. Yeah, they're wiped. Crimea, good job. Wait, what? what is this? Why do I have the soldier? Is this like a rebel that became a soldier of ours? What happened here? Anyways, I can't move him in and out, so I'll just have to disband him. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Poland is kind of losing versus Teutonic Order. Maybe not entirely losing, but they're making progress, which does a big impact. Like, they're currently 35 for 32. I will keep my eye on this. 
if at some point Poland is not going to join this war, this is a golden opportunity for us to strike. Like, that is honestly insane. Teutonic Order, I owe you one, brother. You did God's work for me. I mean, let's strike. Let's see what we can do versus them. 30,000, and we're fighting in grasslands. 7.5 war score just from this one battle. That is what I'm talking about. Oh, Genoa, you wild for this. Now they actually came here. They're like, he's gone? Well, it's our time to go. Nowhere to run, and nowhere to hide. Thank you for the war score, really appreciate that. Hey, nice, we can automatically complete our agenda once again, and we're gaining 50 admin points. And that is huge, because we can upgrade our admin technology finally to level 5, and we can take our first idea group, which is gonna be Horde ADS. As we have a lot of leftover mill points, we're gonna go ahead and get a couple of those. Now, what do we do with Diplo points? I think we can improve our technology once, even though it's a bit more expensive. And later on, we can just develop something if you want to. Hopefully, it's not gonna take forever until we get to level 7 admin, so we can unlock one of the Diplo idea groups, like Diplomatic. Yeah, like honestly, Diplomatic combined with Horde ADS is really good. Plus 10% siege ability and shock damage. 10,000 should be a wipe here. Easily. Easily was. And let's see what we can do with 16. Well, we took out like 9,000 soldiers, I'm proud of that. Denmark has 16,000 in our capital, that's crazy. And yeah, in this run, Denmark still has Norway and Sweden, so that of course doesn't help. But they're falling like flies, I kinda like that. Nice Sienna, he's bringing Warscar to us. Such a good guy. Not that much remaining until we can take all the stuff that we wanna take. I actually cannot believe that Wallachia expanded like this. They have a good chunk of Moldavia. Now, that usually doesn't happen. I really want to border them, to be honest. Like, that is just free lands waiting for us to take. Hey, actually, that's it. We can finish the war with Genoa. Thank you very much. I'm giving two provinces back to Crimea. And just took one province for myself. Here we have Crimean expansion completed. Ottomans have left the coalition. Wise choice, sir. Wise choice. You have to, right? You're getting demolished. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, I so wanna start this war up. When I started this run, I actually didn't think I would have that much fun, but there's just lots and lots of different opportunities. I gotta say, having like a jam, Chagatai, it makes things a bit easier, because you don't actually need to go so ham with your own army, like I'm not even reaching my army force limit. And just by improving relations, we can keep the coalition at bay, which is just great. Well, apparently, during the war, Sweden became an independent nation. That's hilarious. Now that you don't see often. Naples having a huge chunk of the Balkan provinces from the Ottomans. Holy crap. Moria is released and guaranteed by Austria. This is like the perfect run, guys. We are able to piece them out, so this is great. We actually have 94% war score. I think we can finish the war with Lithuania right now. The thing is that it's not possible for us to complete the mission that we want to complete, which is Ruin Rutinia. We are lacking war score for one of the provinces. So, yeah, if we take this, the last province, it's not possible to take it. And even if we gave these two cores of Crimea back to Crimea, it's the same situation. So, I'm not even gonna bother with giving these provinces to Crimea. I'm gonna take it for myself. I'm gonna take the province of Realskas too. And I'm doing this because I don't wanna increase their development so we can finish the annexation quicker. Alright, let's go ahead and finish this. Sweet, sweet peace deal. We're looking glorious. Raise it all down, raise it to the ground. Also, why I didn't break Lithuania's alliances is simply because, well, they no longer have Poland. And Sweden and Denmark are not gonna be great allies for them. So the next time we fight them, it's once again gonna be super easy. We have so, so many choices now. We could simply go for the Ottomans. But I'm a bit afraid to go versus them because they could be improving their mill level to 6 and we won't be able to do so. So they would have an insane advantage. Until we ourselves have level 6, what I'm gonna do is take the easy route for us. And that is gonna be fighting Wallachia. And next after that, I think we can easily go for Muscovy the second time. They still don't have any allies. And yeah, they're fighting Livonian Order and Riga. That's gonna be some, some easy, easy expansion for us. So right, I don't think even after concentrating development that we could finish the annexation of Crimea right now. I'm gonna try and do this after the war with Wallachia. Tribal superiority, let's go. That's really nice, we can pick our first Age of Discovery bonus, let's go for aggressive expansion. Our current ruler is so, so garbage, man. Just horrible. 
I hope he's gonna die and we will have a tribal succession. Let's make this guy our general. <laughs> he's even garbage as a general. I think that now we might just have enough progress to finish the annexation so we can concentrate a total of 16 development. Yeah, so only this one concentration was required, which is great, just in time when we finish the war. Integration is a slow process, indeed it is, and we're done. Thank you very much for all of this juicy land, sir, and juicy mana points. There it is, guys. We have the option to reform the Golden Horde. So now we're turning our lovely Kazan into the Golden Horde. Let's go. We are now an empire, so our governing capacity problem is solved. It was just gotten above 400. I honestly think that Kazan ideas might be better than the Golden Horde ones. Let me know in the comments, guys, what you think. Would you pick the Golden Horde ideas? Because I will be sticking with Kazani ones. And now at this point I would just love to provoke some of these nasty rebels so we can quickly take care of that crap and continue our conquests with Muscovy. Also, we have this. We have 51% crownlands, so we're getting some really nice buffs for reform progress. You don't know what's coming for you, Muscovy. You just don't. In this war, I'm pretty sure we can complete the mission the Tatar Yoke. We should be able to. Now, there is a question about knowledge sharing, like... I don't think we can get it because our diplomatic reputation is horrible because of annexing Crimea. So we could just simply develop a province ourselves, like maybe next to our capital, like one of the steppes provinces. Another thing we could do is also take reduced 5% development cost, but I don't like this modifier that it doesn't lose crownland share from developing provinces. I'm just gonna skip this one. I think let's do it anyways, like our capital is 30 dev. So if we can develop like a province next to it, it's gonna spread there super fast and we will have, I think, easily 10% of our total share. So then we can just instantly embrace it. And might as well develop this iron province. I think let's do it. So I'm just gonna invest a lot of diplo points and I'll try to save as much mill points as possible because I really wanna increase my mill level. Big battle, big juicy battle. Which, it seems we are losing. No, we actually won. Oh god, I was about to say. That's how much we need level 6 mil. Well, he doesn't have it himself, but it would be a good boost. Ottomans want mil access? What? Are you crazy? Out of your mind or something? No, Kagan's reputation tarnished. Are you serious, man? Now the bullshit begins. I take my words back. Miracles are happening after all. This is also a pretty good miracle. We are just spawning 340 ducats out of thin air. Oh, I think they might be done here. My lovely independent army is gonna take care of this bullshit. And we have 97% worse for that. That's it, that's it, that's it. Just remind me what I need to take. No, how did I mess this up, man? Now that's what we needed to take. We needed to take Toropetsas from Lithuania in the first war. Well, yep, yeah, lesson learned. I think this is not the first time I forget this province. Anyways, so this is gonna be my peace deal. And the next war with L Lithuania, we're gonna take all that we need. That one remaining province, and of course, one remaining province that we need to complete uh, Ruin Rutinia. Oh, it's owned by Poland now. Okay, so we can p fight Poland, I guess, pretty soon. But now, it's definitely Uzbek's turn to suffer. Yeah, you're going down. I love the fact that we're getting so many points because we have Renaissance in one of our provinces already spawned and it should appear pretty soon in our capital. So I did spawn it in Bulgar, 35 development it took and Kazan, 3 per month, gonna appear in no time. We will be done ready to get level 6 mil and admin. By the way, I'm just gonna break this alliance with Chagatai now, don't need him anymore. So we have another expansion route. 13,000 Afghanis just don't know what they signed up for. Oh, you absolute rascals. We had 71% siege progress and they're stopping us. I actually have to leave because they would wipe the 7,000. Oh man, these guys. You're gonna pay. You're gonna pay for this crap. Hey, I think now might as well we get our renaissance. So, 900 ducats. We're gonna take a couple of loans. Don't look at the balance, boys. It's not realistic. We're gonna bump this up. No problem whatsoever. Let's embrace it. Let's take level 6 military. So now we're just cooking. We're gonna absolutely cook Afghanistan. Seriously? 71%? Again? This game hates me, doesn't it? Now I'm convinced this game hates me. I lost one stability like a couple of months ago. Once again. Oh god, that's just horrible. Hey, at least finally we got rid of Afghanistan. So get out of here. And of course that only means one thing. And that is us finishing the war with Uzbek. 
I think that's quite a pretty peace deal. Thank you so much. Glorious. Just awesome look for our nation. Not much stuff to raise though, is it? But yeah, here we go. We have all level 6 technology, so we're doing pretty good. Our rival list looks like this. We can rival the Ottomans, Poland, and sure, let's go for Ming. Now, with all of this done, we also completed Subjugate the Kazakhs. And acquiring these provinces is just super, super cheap once again. Right, we can also select our third government reform, Religious Unity, or we can go for Land Maintenance Modifier. Now, our Religious Unity is not that bad, to be honest. So I will take the second option. I think it's gonna save us a lot of money. Oh yeah, I should also mention the fact that we are getting additional 25 religious unity from Horde Ideas and another 25 from Kazan Ideas. So guys, yeah. If you go for this campaign and you stick with Kazani Ideas, you pretty much never have to worry about religious unity from the very beginning after completing just three of your ideas. And honestly, I think this is the perfect point to end this part of the run. I'm saying this part because I'm willing to restore the Mongol Empire as Kazan, if that is something that you would like to see, guys. So if you did enjoy this campaign as much as I did, then leave a like. If we get 700, I will do the second part where we will do exactly what I said. But yeah, we're finishing this part with us being the first greatest power. 787 development. Ottomans are badly struggling in this game, so if we do continue this, I would probably fight the Ottomans. We are matching their mill level. Their army is small as hell. And of course I would fight Poland, we need stuff from them. Lithuania again, yeah we can fight many of these European nations. And of course we would need to expand into Persia, into Oirat, take down a part of Ming. There's just endless endless possibilities of expansion for the Golden Horde. Right guys, so that's gonna be it. Thank you for watching, I will see you next time. A big thank you to the channel members and patrons Vovino and Lazar.